Ever since Jimmy Butler was signed and traded to the Miami Heat in the 2019 offseason, we have seemingly overlooked the Heat team every single year. Yet, despite our reservations on the team's success, they have outdone their expectations every year. The question remains for this season, can they do it again? They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! With six tenths of a second remaining! Yo to everybody, welcome back to Game Time, it's your boy Dom, and if you guys do enjoy, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe for more, it greatly helps out the channel, but without further ado, let's jump right into things here today. Now today, 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 we are talking about none other than the Miami Heat, one of the most successful organizations in the entirety of the NBA, making the NBA Finals twice in the last four seasons, as well as having a separate Eastern Conference Finals run when they were the one seed back in 2021-2022. The Miami Heat have been exemplary over the past few years and have shown that they are one of the most gritty teams and are willing to get it done no matter how, especially last year being a team that was very overlooked as an eight seed that went on to go to the NBA Finals where they ultimately lost to my Denver Nuggets, but what a run it was that nobody expected. Now this team has only had home court advantage once over the entirety of the Jimmy Butler era, which is something we'll get to here in a second, but I just want to attest to the fact that the Miami Heat might be getting on the run a lot earlier than they did last year. They are currently 8 of 2 in their last 10 games. Their only two losses coming to the most winning organization in the league this year in Boston and the team that they lost to in the NBA Finals last year in the Denver Nuggets. So them pushing themselves out of the plan at this point, getting up to the sixth seed at 35 and 26 is huge for them because it actually puts them in a better situation than they've been in for the majority of the time that they've had Jimmy Butler outside of the one year where they made the one seed. Now they currently sit about half a game behind Orlando and New York, both sit above them. But if they can get above both those teams, they'd be sitting at the four seed, which would give them home court advantage in the first round, something that they haven't seen in a while. It might not be something that is necessarily the most most important fight for Miami, but it is a scenario that hasn't really been possible over the last year or so, because last year, obviously, we saw them be the eight seed. Earlier in the season, it looked like that similar path would happen, but the run that they've been able to go on over the past few weeks, especially since the All-Star break, has been huge for this team, and that's a big testament to some of the moves that, obviously, Pat, Pat Riley made over the offseason whether that be the draft or signing certain players, even trades last year and this year. And then obviously I think one of the biggest things has been Duncan Robinson's reemergence this season. But before we get to Duncan Robinson, I just want to look at the team as a whole and how they've been able to get this done throughout the regular season without having Jimmy Butler playoff form really, or Jimmy Butler, whatever you want to call it, kind of come out to this point in the season. Now, this team has been a very good three-point shooting team at, to this point throughout the year. They are bottom 10 in attempts, yet top 10 in percentage, which is huge for them because it helps make up for that lack of attempts. And obviously this team really hangs their hat on the defensive side of the ball so the better that they can shoot the three point the better that they can kind of progress especially after what we saw last year in the playoffs where they got really really hot going into the postseason having historical numbers and that definitely catapulted them to be able to go far in the playoffs especially in a year that there's been such high scoring it doesn't really concern me that the heat have still been one of the lower scoring teams in the league just because of the fact that they really do hang their head on the defensive side of the ball now they have been 27th in points per game which is not the best and as for their defense though they have been sixth only allowing 109 points per game against them so that is um a net positive i guess if you want to call it that um not by a ton but it shows you the stark difference between their defense and their offense where they are one of the best defensive teams in the league and have struggled to be offensive i guess offensively imposing on other teams is the way i was trying to word that um and i think a lot of that is consistent throughout the entirety of the jimmy butler run to this point now as it goes for leaders on the team jimmy butler is currently leading them in points per game without having kind of taken that next step that we usually see him do in the playoffs at 21.9 ben metabio leads them in rebounds at 10.3 and then jimmy butler also this year has been their leading assist assist getter get assist player best passer i don't know however you want to word that he's averaging 4.8 assists on the season for them but that's been the playmaking has been spread out that's the word i was looking for best playmaker um as tyler hero has averaged 4.4 for them bam out of bio has averaged 4.1 since getting there terry, terry rozier has taken the lead in that playmaking role getting up to 5.5 and i guess prior to being traded um kyle lowry also is averaging about four assists per game so it's been a pretty spread of playmaking for the rest of their team or 
no Kyle Lowry just got cut sorry not traded um but yeah it's been a pretty spread of playmaking for the rest of their team which I think um obviously comes from the fact that you lost Gabe Vincent who was huge for them last year and was their starting point guard and um yeah it, there isn't like a true like point guard there isn't a Chris Paul on this team where you're expecting that person to be you know they're leading us to sky by quite a bit there isn't a Nicole Jokic or a LeBron or something like that so it makes sense that it's been mostly um playmaking by committee but that has worked for this team and um especially when you consider that now it seems like a lot more guys on this team are being able to go get their own shot so that's helped a lot throughout the regular season obviously we know what jimmy butler is he's one of the better defensive wings in the league obviously a guy that elevates in the playoffs like almost no other throughout the entirety of history um and so he's not been a worry but tether hero has been huge for them throughout this regular season averaging over 20 points per game and it's you know hopeful that they'll have him come playoff time as he's been one of their best three-point shooters as well shooting almost 40 percent from three on eight attempts per game um which i mean i guess you could compare with duncan robinson's 6.9 attempts per game and 40.5 percent from three so it's very comparable to who is the best three-point shooter obviously here has a little bit more volume Duncan Robinson has a little bit higher percentage, whatever it is. Um, but they've had two very good shooters to this point throughout the season, which is very similar to what they had last year, um, where Max Struess was very good. And then obviously, I think Gabe Vincent got super hot in the playoffs where he didn't have Tyler Hero. So you are hoping that a guy like Terry Rozier, who you brought in at the deadline, can be a little bit better for you, especially considering how much they had to give up for him. Because when we start talking about Terry Rozier, you had to give up a 2027 first round pick to go out and get him. And, um, that obviously also included Kyle Lowry, who went on to get cut as well. But it was a high price from what the Miami Heat were wanting to pay and a much lower asset than what they were looking at, as obviously this was a team that was linked to potentially going and getting a Donovan Mitchell or a Trey Young or something like that. That was like a true like, oh, yeah, this guy can be your number one scorer on a championship team. Obviously, I think Jimmy Butler at this point has proven that he could as well. Um, but Terry Rozier is no nowhere near in the category of player that those two are. And since getting them, he has definitely taken a sharp decline. So you hope that you can see him get back to where he was in Charlotte. Now, there is, I guess, some positive that he has come in and averaged their most assists per game on the team, but his points per game has dropped almost 10 points per game since getting to Miami, going from 23 to 13. And then as it goes for percentages, not only has his percentage from the field dropped significantly, but his percentage from three has dropped about 14% to bring him down to a 24% three-point shooter in Miami, which is pretty atrocious um, considering he's supposed to be a guy that's very good from three. So hopefully some of that kind of picks back up. And he's been the one guy that we haven't quite seen get, um, I guess, that next step since getting to Miami. Now he's only played 13 games here in Miami. And hopefully, you know, as you get closer to the playoffs or in the playoffs, he kind of reverts back to where he was in Charlotte. Um, but that does leave a huge question mark on this team once it comes playoff time. What doesn't leave a huge question mark outside of the main three, obviously being Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, and Bam Adebayo, is their rookie. Their rookie, Jaime Hawkins Jr., has been great for them. He's obviously one of the older rookies coming in at 23 years old, or 22, now 23. Um, so happy late birthday to Jaime Hawkins, just turned 23 in February. Um, but yeah, he's been amazing for this team. What worried me initially when he was, or when we were getting into the draft, was if he would be similar to Johnny Juzang, who came out of UCLA a few years ago as well, where we saw Juzang be very good for UCLA in March Madness, then go on to go undrafted and not be great in the league. Obviously, he's bounced around a little bit. I think he's on Utah now. And, or he might have only been on Utah, whatever it is. He hasn't been great, right? And he was a guy that helped push him super far. Jaime Jaquez kind of took over and was that guy for UCLA. It was a question, you know, he ends up going in the first round and it was like, to me, I was like, oh, is he going to do what Juzang did? And he's been the exact opposite. He has been a pro's pro as a rookie, which is something um, to, you know, credit him for uh, to this point throughout his career to just be able to come into the NBA, average 13 points per game, be one of the leading contributors on a team that went to the finals last year and just fitting seamlessly, especially you know, considering that this is definitely a playoff riser team. So for him to be so effective throughout the regular season and help them win games has been big. And it, it's definitely shown throughout the regular season. Um, but to get back to what I was talking about earlier with Duncan Robinson, who I think has been one of the craziest stories in the league that maybe hasn't been talked about enough this year, is just his resurgence. Last year, he plays 42 games. He only starts one game and he averages six points per game on 32% from three, um, which essentially is a career low because it's the lowest he shot since his rookie year where he only played 15 games, right? And really the lowest since he got on the scene because for the three years prior, he shot 
um, 44% from three, 40% from three, and 37% from three, respectively, all on eight attempts per game or more, essentially. And last year, we just saw such a decline where he wasn't trusted to be in the rotation. The defense was clearly a liability. He really couldn't do anything but shoot, and that was at its lowest point throughout his career, especially in attempts as well. His attempts nearly cut in half, as well as his percentage going down. So we saw a stark decline in him last year, and being on quite a huge contract for this team, averaging almost $20 million per season for them, and that goes until 2025-2026, just as long as Jimmy Butler's contract and Bam Adebayo's contract go with this team. So he was locked up as a crucial part of this team and definitely struggled a ton last year, became one of the most untradeable contracts in the league but then we see him this year reverts back to form shooting over 40 percent on almost seven attempts per game averaging nearly a career high in points on uh, averaging a career high in steals he's been more of an off the dribble guy he's been able to start for them come off the bench for them be there when they need him type guy and he's played one of the most games for the team as well in playing 55 games for the team to this point when you look at the rest of the team this team has struggled with guys not playing a lot of games jimmy butler's dealt with some off the court stuff um with his family and then he's been suspended he's had some injuries tyler heroes only played 36 games terry rogier just got brought in and has only been thir played 13 games but duncan robinson has been the most consistent player for them playing 55 games which is the most of any player on the roster second would be jaime Hawkes, which again has been huge for them throughout the regular season and then also Bam Adebayo has been their third best, or third most player, third most played game played player. However you word that, he's played the third most games for them um, throughout the regular season with 50. But yeah, Duncan Robinson has just had such a stark contrast to what he was last year and has just been huge for this game. So if he can keep up this efficiency and he can keep up the improvements that he clearly made to his game to kind of get back into the rotation, then he's going to be a guy that, you know, could be an X Factor type of player for them when we get to the playoffs, because who knows? He's a guy that could go seven of seven from three and just light up the game. And all of a sudden you have a guy scoring 20, 30 points that you didn't expect to that night. Right. And so I think that's just something that Miami Heat have relied on in the past with their role players. And he's definitely been able to um, step up to the plate this season and obviously in years past. Um, excluding last year. So it is something that the team didn't have last year and does have this year. And it makes the loss of Max Struess in the offseason and the loss of Gabe Vincent in the offseason a little bit more manageable because you have a guy like um, Duncan Robinson getting back to the form. Because you have a guy like Jaime Hawkes, you know, coming in as a rookie and being able to be excellent for this team. And then obviously you make a trade to go get Terry Rozier to add a potential another playmaker and, um, you know, shot creator for himself as well, which, you know, as you look at this team, they, I think, have more shot creators this year. They are a deeper team. You still have a guy like Caleb Martin, who is huge for them in the playoffs. You still have a guy like Kevin Love, who is huge for them in the playoffs. You also have a guy like Josh Richardson, who has been pretty solid for this team as well. And it's just, a, I think, a more formidable team than a team that last year went to the NBA Finals. Um, they also just brought in DeLon Wright as well, who we'll see how he kind of meshes with the team. He's only played three games for them to this point, um, averaging five points. But he's another guy that, you know, if Terry Rozier can't get it together, okay, DeLon Wright is a guy that offers a little bit more defensively he's a veteran guard as well so we'll see how that kind of goes together um the backup big situation i guess would be your biggest question mark but you know once you get to playoffs you have nine guys that you can really rely on and then i guess if you saw a kevin love injury or a bam out of bio injury um obviously something that we don't want to see but you know injuries are a real thing and i guess you have to account for them right um you do have a guy like thomas bryant who has you know won championships and he's been there um, throughout deep playoff runs who could step in. You have a second round rookie, I believe, in Orlando Robinson, who stepped in and played decently for him. Actually, in the Nuggets game the other day that the Miami Heat actually lost, um, I saw him get the ball a lot more than I would have expected him to. Um, actually, I think it was about halfway through where I was like, who is that? And I look him up and I was like, oh, okay, it's their second round rookie or whatever. Um, but I was very shocked to see how much he was playing and getting involved on offense. And we'll see if that you know, translates or comes to fruition come playoff time. I'd be shocked if he gets a lot of playoff minutes, um, especially, you know, having brought in DeLon, right? I could see this being a team that goes a little bit more small ball if you don't have Bam on the court. But it was an issue for them last year in the playoffs where if Bam wasn't on the court, you could tell that this team didn't have the size to necessarily match up with the, like, the likes of the Denver Nuggets. And when you look at their own conference this season, well, the Boston Celtics only got bigger, getting Porzingis and adding him to their lineup. And then obviously... The Milwaukee Bucks are a huge team with Brick Lopez and Giannis and Bobby Porters. And like, that's a lot of size that you have to worry about. So it is a concern um, if you are a Heat fan or if you're looking at the Heat for a playoff run 
what they are going to do size-wise come playoffs, but I do think that Bam helps mitigate that a lot. It, it's just, can he be the only true five playing for you is the real question. And I think something that hasn't necessarily been answered by this team, but if they can keep up the three point shooting that they keep, they're going to, you know, push some guys off the court and it's not really going to matter as much um, come playoff time. So yeah, I think this is just another year where it's hard to count this team out. Um, a lot of people have counted them out over the past few seasons and it's definitely bit people in the butt. Um, and I don't know. I mean, them going on a eight, eight and two streak to this point, pushing themselves into a position where they could have home court advantage for the second time since having Jimmy Butler in the first round. And they just seem to kind of be meshing at the right time to not only go on a run for the rest of this regular season, where they actually have a fairly easy schedule. When you look at things, they get to play Washington. They get to play Detroit a few times. They get to go play Toronto two times to end the season and hopefully go on a little win streak into the playoffs. Like there are quite a few teams that are kind of bottom feeders in the Eastern Conference that they can hopefully pick up some extra wins on and help propel themselves up the standings in the East. They, I, I just think them being at a higher standing and not having to worry about the play-in and just being able to get right in, get in a seven-game series, get in their flow um, is exactly what you want for this team. And so again, I just think it's another year where it's hard to count them out. And I think a lot of people might still be slightly overlooking this team. And obviously, Boston has been so good and been such a juggernaut in the Eastern Conference this year. I think they should be such a favorite. Milwaukee has finally started to figure things out on the defensive side of things and has you know gone on a big win streak now having Doc Rivers. And it looks like they could be a little bit more of a formidable team than we might have thought a couple weeks ago come playoff time. The New York Knicks have obviously seen a lot of success, although dealt with a lot of injuries as well. Um, something I think that might need to be more talked about, about how Tom Thibodeau and all of his teams are just so injury riddled um, due to the way that he plays his players. But I, again, I think the Miami Heat have started to be gun being overlooked again. And it's um, not something that's voted well for a lot of people overlooking this team in the past. So I don't know if the Miami Heat are going to go on a big run. I don't know if they're going to win the NBA finals or anything like that, or even make it back, but I'm not willing to count them out again. And not necessarily saying I've counted them out, but I'm not willing to count them out, I guess. Um, just because, I mean, this team has the track record to get it done when it matters. And it's just too hard to look at the Miami Heat and say they can't win a playoff series versus any team in almost the NBA just due to the fact that they can get so hot from three. They have the continuity. Um, and then they obviously have one of the better risers in the playoffs, like I said, of all time in Jimmy Butler. So it's super hard to count this team out. And I'm not saying, again, that I'm expecting them to go to the NBA Finals, um, but I won't say that I don't think they can. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess the, the answer to the question of can they do it again is I don't know. Um, if you guys did enjoy, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe for more. It helps out the channel a ton again, and I appreciate it so much. It's been your boy Dom from Game Time, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace out, guys. So are you pointing at him or me? I'm pointing at Tyler. All right, I'm pointing at me. You can swim though, huh? Yeah. So I, I, I might point at you. I can't swim, so I, I, I can't no swim reason. Either. You can't swim? Uh-uh. Oh, you got hood tendencies, man. Uh -uh. You would run with us. Give me some. <laughs> <laughs> you got hood tendencies. <laughs>